Welcome to Prime Time with El Muli, ladies and gentlemen. Hornbill TV's run out of the top newsmakers from the previous week again. It's comparatively quieter in Manipur now if you consider the first two months of the ethnic violence in the state. Then there was the fracas in the parliament with the Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance keeping the Manipur issue right in the heart of the media space. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had given a small statement earlier after the video of two women being paraded naked emerged on social media. I think you must have been aware of this news. It was all over the country. By the looks of it, politicking, ladies and gentlemen, instead of efforts to resolve the issue, seem to be picking up in the state with the ruling and opposition leaders having a go with each other as always. Elsewhere, Niger's security forces took their own president hostage in a coup. The 64-year-old president was elected as Niger's president two years ago and has been a key Western ally in the fight against Islamic militants in West Africa. Let's check out the newsmakers that made headlines earlier. This raised a lot of eyebrows not because it might have been a false claim but that it was too premature to be making sweeping statements. It might have potentially poured fuel onto the fire. Amid reports of multiple cases of rape and sexual assault in Manipur during the more than two month long ethnic clashes that broke out on May 3rd, the Chief Minister of Manipur, Byron Singh, claimed that there was only one incidence of rape. To observers, it sounded like the government in Manipur was actually portraying some sort of success in bringing the violence under control, ladies and gentlemen. He was referring to the rap of one of the victims seen in the viral video of three women being paraded naked, by, naked and groped by an armed group of men in Kangpuki district on May 4th. The chief minister said that it was the only incident of rape found among about 6,068 first information reports registered, registered across the state with complaints of murder, arson and writing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look on to the next news. The Manipur police have arrested one more person in connection with a case of two women in Manipur who were stripped and paraded naked. Police say that the arrest took the total number of people accused to seven. Police say the two women who are both from the tribal community were allegedly sexually assaulted before being set free by a mob on May 4th. The 26 second video of the incident surfaced on July 19. One of the women seen in the video is the wife of an ex military man who reportedly served in the Assam regiment and had even fought in the Gargil war. This is what he told a news house following the incident. He fought for the nation in the Gargil war and was also part of the Indian peacekeeping force in Sri Lanka. He protected the nation but he said he could not protect his home, his wife and his fellow villagers. Ladies and gentlemen, let's try the next news. In the heat of the violence, most people, including government organizations and community organizations and other citizens from the country, besides the parties involved, they tend to forget that both the sides in conflict, the Maite and the Kuki communities have lost homes, properties and lives, both sides, not only one side. Another sad report that emerged during the previous week was from Kakching district, um, Kakching district Siro village in Manipur. Ebe Tombi, an uh, 80-year-old wife of a freedom fighter in Manipur, was allegedly locked inside her house and then burned by an armed group. Ladies and gentlemen, this news was one of the saddest that we got during the previous week. This incident was reported, uh, reported to be based on a complaint that was lodged at Shiro police station in Manipur. Her husband, as Chura Chan Singh, who died at 80, was said to be a freedom fighter who was honored by former president of India, APJ Abdul Kalam. 
The incident reportedly took place in the early hours of May 28 when places like Siro saw massive violence and exchange of gunfire. Before violence started on May 3rd, Siro was a picturesque village some 45 kilometers from the state's capital, Impal. But only burned houses and structures with bullet marks are all that is left in that village. Ladies and gentlemen, it was one of the worst hit villages during the clashes between the Veli uh, majority Maite and the Hill majority Kuki tribe. Ladies and gentlemen. One of the biggest worries during the past week was the so-called quit notices that were allegedly issued by Mizo organizations in Mizoram against Maite people living there. This led to Maite people in Mizoram to move out and enter Kachar district in Assam. They feared a backlash following statements reportedly issued by the Mizo Students Union and another organization called the Peace Accord X MNF Returnees Association. The number of Maite persons who took shelter at Lakhipur subdivision in Kachar district of Assam was estimated at about 49 on Monday, the previous week. From among the about uh, 2,000 odd Maites living in Mizoram, some had left for Impal by flight during the time. Thankfully, the Mizoram government stepped in to clarify that the statements were not dictates or quit notices as was reported in the media across the northeast in India too. Rather, they clarified these notices were an advisory to the people there to exercise caution for their safety. The Mizoram government clarified the statement issued by the community organizations purporting to order Maite people in Mizoram to leave the state was entirely misunderstood and misconstrued. It was an advisory to exercise caution and not a tiknar or a quit notice asking the Maite community to leave, said a July 22nd statement from the Home Department that was issued by the Mizoram Information and Public Relations Department earlier. Uh, the Home Department said it met with representatives of the All Mizoram Manipuri Association, assuring them of their safety and security in Mizoram. Further, following the press release that was issued by the Peace Accord MNF Returnees Association, which was construed and reported in some sections of the media as a dictate to leave Mizoram, the government met with representatives of the PAMRA in his office chamber on July 22nd. In a meeting, the statement clarified earlier, PAMRA representatives clarified that the press release they issued was an advisory requesting the mighty people living in Mizoram to exercise caution in the light of public sentiments regarding the ongoing ethnic conflict in Manipur. It was not a dictat or a quid notice. The complex and generally uh, sensitive tribal narratives and political history of people in the northeast generally always carry the potential of a conflict in sensitive situations. Ladies and gentlemen, thank God it was resolved. Let's check out the next top newsmaker. Ladies and gentlemen, Are you guys on Twitter or X? Don't even think about the videos. The little blue bird has flown away, leaving literally a mark that is the X. Or more precisely, it is now a more uh, technology sounding kind of uh, a platform now, unlike the blue bird, that fun social media site that we always do know. Twitter has transformed into X as the site's former bird logo has now been replaced by an official new X logo. Uh, multi billionaire uh, Elon Musk, who owns the social media site, began signaling the change early Sunday morning with a series of tweets, starting one that said, And soon we shall bid adieu to the Twitter brand and generally to all the birds. That's what he tweeted. Or, no, that's what he said. Is no more Twitter for him, so we can't say it's tweeted. Now, X has replaced the Twitter logo on the web version too, signaling a change to Musk's Everything app that he originally envisioned shortly after purchasing Twitter for about $44 billion in November. People believe that uh, 
Mr. Musk wants to change the domain name itself to and recreate the former Twitter into a social media site with an entirely different and unique identity of its own, far from the blue birth it once was. Follow Hornbill TV on Twitter for the latest updates if you are on Twitter. Sorry, if you are on X. Let's check out the news from Niger that has been coming in and has been proving to be a headache for world leaders since the previous week. African countries have had a long history of coups and government takeovers by military entities and political adversaries. Niger's security forces have reportedly taken their own president, Mohamed Bozum, in hostage in his presidential palace following a coup earlier. Reports say Bozum was taken hostage in his presidential palace. Some members of the presidential guard has started an anti-republican movement and that the military and the national guard were ready, ready to attack those involved if the movement did not end, Al Jazeera reported earlier. Calling for immediate release of Bozum, the U.S. condemned any effort to seize power by force in Niger as soldiers have surrounded the presidential palace and claim to have taken power of the country, ladies and gentlemen. Dimapur police have for the second time introduced traffic lights in the city, ladies and gentlemen. Why does it sound like this is all news for all of you? This is not the first time actually. Years ago, the authorities installed traffic lights at the Telax point as a pilot project. What happened? Drivers didn't care or didn't know how to use them or that was what people in the media said reportedly. The second reason, low electricity. That was the reason why the first set of traffic lights in Dimapur was taken down because nobody cared and second, everyone neglected the lights. So there you are. The Dimapur Commissioner of Police has informed that the improvised traffic control system have been made operational at the Nagajan Police Point and Holy Cross Police Point. Interestingly and embarrassingly, for people like us who do not care about traffic rules or have respect for people, especially pedestrians, the authorities had to instruct us what this, all, uh, this whole thing about traffic lights are, which is this. Uh, but then it's a, it's a good thing that we should be educated in this. The Nimapuri authorities say that the red light means your vehicle must stop fully behind the stop line until the light turns green. The yellow light is a transitional warning signal that indicates that the green or red light is about to appear. The signal is used as a warning to alert drivers to slow down or prepare to move. But one cannot drive through if si the signal is yellow. A green light means go through the intersection carefully and slowly, ladies and gentlemen. The stop line is the line painted before the edge of the zebra crossing on the road. Vehicles have to stop before the, line, the stop line whenever the traffic light signals comes on. Now that the traffic lights have been installed in Dimapur at least, it is time for the authorities to seriously consider one of the most important aspects of city management, especially for places like Dimapur, pedestrian passages, people who use the road on foot. Nagaland is one of the states in India where pedestrians enjoy neither the right nor the facilities for them. Road and traffic regulations are generally expected to always incorporate pedestrians' facilities. Zebra crossing, for instance, is a facility that is enabled and complemented by traffic lights. The whole idea of using traffic lights is to ensure actually not only motorists on, uh, in vehicles, but to ensure the safety of pedestrians and citizens who have to use the road on foot. It will be wonderful if the Mapur authorities seriously start incorporating pedestrians' facilities in city infrastructure here. It is not a demand, but it is a right, ladies and gentlemen. Those were the top newsmakers for now. Ladies and gentlemen, follow Hornbill TV on our now active Twitter or X for more news updates in this regard. Hornbill TV will be bringing you more. I'm Al See you next time.